excited. All right. Well, yeah. welcome back from break, everybody. Um, <clears throat> we're getting ready to uh, to go into uh, uh, some floor demonstrations here with uh, Nick Myers, one of our team members, and uh, we have Holden the Golden. He's back there anxiously awaiting his <laughs> debut uh, as an actor dog. He's actually a service dog in training. I mentioned him at the opening there. He's a one-year-old golden retriever, and uh, we'll be using him for, uh, for some of the demonstrations. Uh, but first, uh, Nick's going to go through uh, and show you uh, up close uh, how the different mounts work, especially like the crate mount and, and how he's going to be using it in some of the crate training activities that Holden's going to be a part of. And so uh, I'll narrate, uh, if, if Nick uh, has any comments, you may not pick them up on this mic, so I'll just relay those. And please ask questions as you have those. We wanna make sure that your questions get answered in this segment. So um, with that, Nick, if you'll uh, take it away, he's gonna show the crate mount now. And this is, uh, we have two crate mounts. Uh, one we call the standard duty, if you can see that up close, there's two parts to it. Uh, one attaches with these, uh, these are reusable zip ties, so you can just uh, loosen them up. You don't have to cut them. You could, regular zip tie would work, but that gives it flexibility for lots of different crates. And uh, the feeder mounts on top, but then the, the unit itself goes through the bars of, of a crate. He's uh, loosening up the zip ties now. So this is a cargo crate. Uh, with our, if you have the original um, steel crate mount, and I think he's going to show that in a little bit, the chute for that um, was a little bit too wide for some of the smaller crates. So we took your feedback from that. We're always listening to our customers and pet tutor users and trying to make uh, improve on the products. So this version of the crate mount, uh, it's smaller and much lighter in a lot of ways, but it also that chute allows it to go into smaller size openings. And uh, then you can just adjust uh, the zip ties to fit anything, any size opening that you want. And you could cut the extra pieces off if you want or use regular zip ties. And by the way, uh, zip ties are also made in, even in stainless steel. So if you wanted something really rugged, you could even go that, that dramatic. So once you get it attached on, then it's the same locking system, just you, uh, you set it down and a quick twist and you're ready to go. And so now the feeder will uh, dispense down that chute into the crate. And uh, for some of the crates, I've found that uh, that can be uh, kind of hard uh, to get it into the crate with the, with the original mount, but this one's pretty versatile, um, much smaller, much compact, and, and it will go in the travel bag. So it's also engineered to, to fit in our, our, it could be one of the, the mount options to go in the travel bag. So that is the standard duty crate mount uh, that comes in those two parts. When you order one online, uh, and the special that we have today, when you, when, it, when you get a crate mount, you can think of it as a kit or a set. It comes with this uh, universal base and with a crate mount. And now uh, Nick's going to show our original stainless steel, we call it the tank. Uh, it is <clears throat> uh, stainless steel with a powder coat on top of it with stainless steel clips. It's really, really rugged. Uh, for most applications, unless you're in a kennel operation using harsh sanitizing chemicals, um, you, uh, you probably don't need this, this level of ruggedness. Um, but it, and it can be a little bit harder to attach on a smaller crate like this, uh, which makes it uh, um, uh, much more flexible. Someone asked if there's a sale today. Yes, there is. We'll announce that in a little bit. So we're going through and then same type of mounting system, just a twist lock and, uh, and it goes on the crate. Uh, and so you've got those two options that are in the store today, the stainless steel that does carry a lifetime warranty. Uh, but like I said, I think the, the plastic version uh, is pretty, pretty good. That, that lasts a long time as long as you're not using harsh chemicals. Same idea. Um, it just, it takes a little bit uh, bigger opening to work with the stainless steel version, about one inch or bigger on the opening. Uh, we ha even have some people that are using it on uh, bird cages. Uh, we've had several people use it with bird cages. So there's the two mounts. You can see the dramatic difference in size. It makes the other one 
uh, much more portable too. If you're trying to, uh, to travel somewhere, uh, it's a little bit harder to get in your suitcase. It certainly that the steel one will not fit in the travel bag. That's, that's a guarantee. Okay, so that's fitting it on the cargo crate. And then there's Holden, uh, anxiously awaiting his, uh, his time on stage. And then uh, there we're putting it on uh, uh, a regular wire crate. And so that one attaches on, on a door or on the side of the crate. Now, um, a tip that Amanda has, has shared is uh, you could actually switch uh, where you mount it. So instead of mounting it on the outside of the crate, um, you could mount either one of these on the inside of the crate and there's Holden just right on cue. He says that this is where we stand when we're getting our treats. Uh, boy, you're a good boy, Holden. And the reason you would mount it on the inside. Yeah, so if you, yeah, sorry, I got distracted <laughs> by the dog. Oh, look, so golden retriever, how cute. Yes, that's what, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> you put the pet tutor yeah. mounted on the inside so that if your dog is free, on the outside in the home and you would maybe want to leave them unattended. That way the treats are coming from the uh, inside to the floor on the outside so that the pet tutor is protected. Yeah, so if you have a really assertive dog, you can protect it inside a cage. I've even heard uh, people talking about this approach working with larger animals like horses. Uh, so if you wanted to protect the pet tutor, you could put it inside a wire frame like mm -hmm. that. Uh, to protect the pet tutor and then dispense out using uh, one of those uh, crate mounts. Um, the other option that uh, Nick is uh, showing us now is our brand new hook. It's, it's simple, but wow, is it, is it really getting popular? It's so much fun. Um, and this is based on a lot of user feedback and our own experience. Uh, because we had the handle there, we needed more ways to mount it. Um, and certainly uh, every, most people have a door in their home somewhere. So you can hang it on a door uh, in the house uh, or you could use it a crate as well. You can hang it on a crate. And so Nick is showing how you could actually use that hook to hang the pet tutor inside the crate. And again, the treat drops out the bottom. So you really don't need anything other than that. You can just hang it in the crate uh, it'll also go in a soft-sided crate. We've got another soft-sided crate. Um, and uh, there are usually on those soft-sided crates a rod uh, running through the top to hold that crate firmly in place. And you can hang it from one of those rods. So there it is hooked over one of the rods of a soft-sided crate. If you put the uh, pet tutor in mute uh, and let it run on auto, it'll drop if you're in a dog training class or you're someplace where you don't want to make a lot of noise, uh, no one will, will know it's even running. So you just hit that middle button, which is the, the volume button, put it on mute, hang it in that, uh, hang it in the crate. If you're in a dog training class and no one will know that you're, you're keeping your dog quiet. Uh, so that's uh, the hook has a lot of versatility. We just saw in the user group, someone posted, uh, they use the hook to hang it on the back of a couch. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they put uh, a little ball. We're going to show you a, a game uh, in just a little bit. That's part of this segment is enrichment and games. But you can uh, uh, also hang it uh, as part of a game. Yeah, there's the, the ball. So you could hang it over the ball pit. And there's a little mini ball pit out of a cardboard lid. Uh, hang that on the back of the couch and it drops down in there. And then the dog has to find the treat at the bottom of the ball. So it's kind of a fun discovery game. So lots, lots of options for the hook, uh, hanging on a doorknob, um, over the top of a door, hanging on the side of a crate, um, back of a couch, a chair. So there are lots of places to do that. And that's all shared in the, in the user group too. And then, <clears throat> so what Nick ha is getting ready to show now is our original floor base, or we call it the heavy duty floor base. Uh, Amanda showed that early at the beginning. There's a bowl. There's the bowl looking at you now, and it just uh, dispenses down into the bowl. And now this one is is really nice if you've got like an uneven surface, like you're out in the grass or outside. That base helps stabilize it. Um, and you can see the big difference in size there. Again, the trade-off, uh, it's, not it's not as portable as our uh, portable versions. 
Um, but that was uh, the original, the steel, and then this is the extra duty you can see now inside the crate. <laughs> it's, uh, it takes up a little bit more room. Uh, it's been done, uh, especially in a bigger crate. Now this is getting pretty small to get a dog and the feeder into, uh, where you could do it with the, uh, with the hook approach. But again, that's an option. Uh, Nick, could you set but that you, just up on top of the yeah. crate for a second and, and show the chase feed, if you could turn it around so we can see the, the chute in the back. And so another way that people have used it is to put that chute that uh, drops down in into the crate. Uh, and that will, that's another way you could deliver into the crate. And if you press it there, it dropped, uh, it ran down the chute. I don't know if they're well, gonna, the <laughs> wires are kind of in the way. But. No, no, he has, he just hasn't reversed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you do have to find the sweet spot. Yeah, yes. there, there it went, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another way you could do it, or you could just set the feeder itself right on top of the crate and it would drop straight down. Mm -hmm. uh, like that barking video that we showed earlier. So we've gone over the, uh, the original uh, floor base, the um, original uh, heavy, that's a heavy duty uh, stainless steel crate mount, uh, the heavy duty floor base. Uh, we talked about the hook and uh, let's see, what else do we, uh, the travel bowl set? Oh, oh yeah, there's the handle. Um, I mentioned uh, earlier on, uh, we've had kennels that will put, uh, uh, a rope onto the stainless steel handle and a pulley up in the ceiling and then raise it up into the ceiling and put it on um, um, put it on battery power and you can dispense down away from the dog, keep it away from the dog. So just the handle alone, that's what it comes with, uh, gives you a lot of mounting options for that. And there's the, uh, the opening. Uh, I will, um, just one caveat, that opening is nice and big, so you can get some pretty good sized treats that come out of that. Also, a mouse can go up inside. So if you're uh, planning on putting your pet tutor someplace where there are mice, uh, we highly recommend that uh, once you're done training, you set it someplace where um, the mice can't get to it. Yep, and there's the inside of the feeder um, with that uh, special patented uh, brush delivery system. And that, uh, that is the, the regular size, uh, five cups of, of food. Uh, it will hold. And again, the shorty, which uh, which we had out earlier, and then Nick's going to show the shorty again next to that. That's three cups. So you have those two options when you look at the feeder. And again, the only difference, the only difference is the height of the tube and the capacity. Three cups versus five cups, and the shorty is a couple inches shorter. And as Deb said, she really likes the shorty because it's cute. <laughs> but I think it's pretty cute too. And the price is the same, whether it's the shorty or the regular. Um, all the attachments uh, work with either one of those. In fact, all the mounts will work with any generation pet tutor. Earlier this morning, we talked about the generation one, generation two, and generation three pet tutor. All of the mounts that you're seeing uh, work with any of those uh, generation products. And now, <clears throat> um, you know, we're, uh, we've got a segment later this afternoon with our good friend, uh, Jamie Popper at CLIMB. She'll be uh, demonstrating the CLIMB table, uh, but uh, she'll go into actually how to use the pet tutor and CLIMB together. Nick is gonna show you how the mount works. And so this is the CLIMB set, CLIMB mounting set. There are three parts to it, uh, the bowl, and the, we call it the climb adapter and he's unscrewing it. There's a screw uh, fitting in the bottom of the universal base. So the orange part is the climb adapter. And then the other part, the other gray part there is the universal mount. And that works with several of our products. So there are the three parts that uh, go together to make um, a climb set. And there's the, the hole in the bottom that you screw the mount into. And then uh, Nick, you may have to, when you show how that goes into the climb table, we're gonna sh show you how to do that. You may have to tilt the table a little bit or maybe prop one on top of the other somehow so they can get, yeah, that might work, that might work. 
Yeah, a little bit like that. So you can see the, the climb, and this is just a standard climb table. It comes with uh, the four legs that screw into the bottom. Uh, nothing special is required uh, from climb. So you just use a regular climb table and you push that uh, orange climb adapter into the pocket where the leg is, and then you screw the leg down and that tightens it into position. And, and there it is setting the little bowl will deliver right onto the table. Uh, and so if you wanted to deliver it out across the table, you could just leave the bowl off and it, it would travel onto the climb. But uh, that'll fit on any of the four legs uh, and it's very secure. When you tighten that leg in, it really, uh, it holds onto it pretty, pretty firmly. And again, uh, we will, we're not gonna show in this segment uh, all the ways you can use those two together. That'll be coming uh, with uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie Popper's video at uh, four o'clock uh, Eastern time today. So Jamie will show you uh, lots of different ways you can use that. And that'll be, uh, that was filmed at the, um, at the uh, Blue Nine uh, studio. And so uh, now we're gonna show how uh, crate training, Nick. Uh, uh, so we're gonna do some crate training and then we're gonna uh, introduce a little bit of games. Uh, the, the first stage of this is, let's say, now obviously, uh, this boy uh, is familiar with being in a crate, but we're going to show you how you would start off with a, a dog that might not be uh, familiar uh, with the climb. Um, let's see. Uh, can you turn around so the treats fall onto the floor? Can you turn around on the... Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think someone just asked a question, can you turn around so they fall on the floor? Yeah, with the crate mount, uh, you can uh, twist the feeder around um, 180 degrees when you lock it in and the treats will fall on the floor. You see the way it's in the background now mounted onto the crate. If you rotated it 100, we're not going to do that, but if you rotate it 180 degrees, oh, isn't he cute? What was I talking about? I <laughs> the golden retriever. Dog, I see a dog. Um, and it'll it'll drop on the floor. Uh, so Holden, um, let's let's say that we wanted him. So we're going to do the thing where we shape it into the into the crate. All right, just a second, so we can mount it like on the uh, uh, on the regular floor base, and then walk it toward the the crate. Yeah. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now, uh, and I think uh, uh, someone uh, asked uh, about the, the tilt mode of the smart clicker. And so. Oh, it's backwards, I think. Oh, it's backwards, yeah. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is kind of get Holden used to the, uh, the pet tutor. Let's pretend like, like Deb was saying earlier, you want to kind of introduce it early and easy, make it easy for the dog. Oh, yep. So there's some treats. So he's just kind of getting used to the, to the pet tutor to start. So uh, we'll want to transition into the tilt mode. Yep, so we're getting closer and closer to the crate now. And so this is, again, let's assume that you might have a dog that's not used to uh, the crate or is fearful of the crate. So you want to take it in small steps. Uh, depends on each dog has to be treated uniquely. Uh, there we go. All right, now we're getting a little bit closer to the crate. Yep. And we'll just wait him out. And then he's gonna, Nick's gonna call him over again. Yeah, this is a one year old uh, golden retriever with lots of energy. <laughs> All 
Now we're getting closer to the crate. Yep, yep, we won't reward that, you know, so he scratched at the floor base, so we're not going to reward that. Does he have a small reference? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, and there, you know, it might be, uh, so that's one way to, to crate train, and, and we had the hook earlier, and so uh, will, uh, will this be available? Oh, someone was asking about a recording. Yeah, we, our plan is if our technology all works for us in recording, we'll be, uh, 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 we'll be uh, posting a recording of this. Ho hopefully we can, do that. That's that's the intent. Okay. All right. So now you know that's one approach to uh, to getting to use to uh, going in the crate. But now we're going to show you another way. Uh, I think uh, with with the Kong wobbler. So we said that there was a tilt sensor <laughs> in the um, in the remote. So Nick, if you could hold that up to the camera, <laughs> it's like all I see is golden retriever. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can see the uh, the remote uh, smart clicker has two buttons on it. Uh, the left button is the mode select. So you, you hold it down and then press the right button and the, the yellow light will come on. And that indicates, now you see the yellow light, that says you're about to go into tilt mode. And if you let go of it, now if it gets wiggled, it triggers the feeder. And you see, oh boy, I got some treats in there. So what we're gonna do is turn this into a game. We're, we'll make it a crate game, and this is not the, the famous crate games of uh, Susan Garrett. You'll see Susan Garrett uh, coming up later this afternoon. She's got a live presentation at 3 o'clock. Um, but what we've got going here is the dog is now training himself to go in the crate. Closer, uh, closer, Nick, less separation between the feeder and the, yeah, so you want to uh, start off with easy steps. Yeah, so this boy loves to play, and he was so excited about playing with the wobbler that he forgot about the treats. So uh, by moving it closer to the treats, he recognizes the treat when it falls, so now he's going in the crate to get his treat. If he was a a little fearful of going in the crate. Uh, we might even put that on the floor base and move the feeder out uh, like Nick did earlier and let the dog train himself to go into the crate. So now we're just uh, observers. This is the dog practicing a behavior, having fun and getting a treat. If we didn't run out of treats, which <laughs> there we go, yep. So that is a, a turning training into a game, uh, or you can just have any Kong Wob. Oh, thank you, really great question. Uh, this is not a regular Kong, it is a Kong Wobbler. Yes, any Kong Wobbler. There's a, I, I don't know if they call them medium and small, or medium there's two sizes. Medium uh, and large, I think. Yeah, medium and large. Uh, this is, I think, the large one. Uh, you can also get it in a small, but the smart clicker will fit in that. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the logo's on both sides. Yeah, the URL is on the back side of the, um, of the feeder that tells you front from back. Here's some other toys that the, um, the uh, smart clicker will fit into. What Nick has in his hands right now is the IQ ball. And so with that, 
you can put it in a ball that rolls somewhere. Now the dog's got to go find it. Here's another treat dispensing toy. These are just standard off the shelf treat dispensing toys that you would normally put treats in, but you can put the smart clicker in those. Uh, someone on the user group uh, just recently, I think yesterday posted, they even put it like with a small dog, put it in like a little Tupperware container. So you can, you can get really creative with it. Uh, just make sure if you're going to use something like that, that it's uh, your dog that can't, it, you should do it supervised. Uh, and here's another uh, Kong product. Uh, you can unscrew and, and put treats in, uh, but you can also put the, <laughs> he's like, see, he's trying to, oh, now we're going to eat it. He loves to, to chew stuff. He's, he's, he's a big chewer. Yeah, Holden hears the treat being released, yes. Yeah, well, he always hears the beep. Oh I, oh, I don't know if you guys could hear it. You know, maybe not, you're picking up on the mic, but every time he hits the wobbler, yeah, thanks for that point, uh, the feeder beeps. So he is getting a marker signal. He's getting a beep from the feeder when it hits. You can turn the volume up, you can turn it down, you can even put it on mute. And I think you could raise the bar on the game too if you – put it around the back side of the crate so that he had to go all the way mm, around mm. to get into the crate mm -hmm. uh, if he's uh, yeah right it, we could uh, and now he's like hmm you know he's burning a little more juice on that one to wow that Did you out. see yeah. that that was a uh -huh. big game yeah. change yeah yeah or down that hallway um, yeah oops. yeah look at that <laughs> oh like, hmm. how do I get there Let's, I know. I want let's him, see. Yeah, let's, let's see if he can. He's oh yeah! It. <laughs> I got it. The golden wins again. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I think but, he likes this game. <laughs> and and it might have been too fast to go all the way around. That because, was a big jump, and so he, we could have made it maybe to yep. the side first, and then uh, you know, yep. inch, take it in different. Steps. Yeah, smaller baby smaller, steps, smaller but steps but this boy there. got it, mm -hmm. and he yeah. plays the game, so he's yeah. uh, he knows what he's uh, doing. Oh, yeah. Yes, so, sure, sure. We can show that. Yeah, somebody wanted to show the object. Oh, it's in the wobbler. They want to see the smart clicker. Yeah, we're going to put the, uh, the object that's in the standard wobbler. This is our pet tutor smart clicker. Uh, if you want to think of it, it's a remote control. It comes with this little strap when the instructions are on the back. It has a coin battery inside. And it has to be, you can use it as a regular remote where you just push the button but you can also put it into a mode where it senses a, a wiggle, a movement of the, of the smart clicker itself. And that can go in through a, a Kong Wobbler. Sometimes uh, we use a little koozie. At yeah, I like to put it in, a, in something to help protect it or so it doesn't rattle around inside the, uh, uh, the treat dispensing toy. Uh, and you wanna use something that's pretty secure so the dog can't get to it. Mm -hmm. And is that called the tilt? Yeah, it's a tilt mode. Like uh, when you uh, have your phone and you rotate the phone, it switches from portrait to landscape mode. You know, that kind of, it's the same thing. Uh, the technical name for the sensor is an accelerometer and it just measures the orientation or the change uh, of the device. So when it gets bumped a little bit, it changes the, the device. The smart clicker changes its uh, orientation. And show them uh, on the back of the smart clicker that it reminds them how to get into the tilt mode. Yeah, the instructions. Yeah, just so that they know it's pretty easy to do. Uh, he wants to see the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he is so funny. Yes. Yeah. He woke up. Yeah, those are the instructions on the back if you forget how to use it. But it's uh, the two basic modes are tilt mode uh, which uh, is, and there's the, uh, Nick opened it, there's a little coin battery, CR2032, those are everywhere. Common, yeah. Very, very common. Drugstore, really. Yep, and mm -hmm. uh, you put it in tilt mode. If there's no tilt activity for three minutes, it'll go to sleep. Uh, so you'll have to put it back in tilt mode. But uh, if you've got enough food, I think you just ran out of food. Yep, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Meals. <or laughs> He's, He's going. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, and so uh, Nick had mentioned a reminder earlier, you can, you can get really, really creative with this game. So you see, the whole idea is dog, you put the smart clicker in tilt mode, put it into the wobbler, and uh, the dog touches the wobbler, hits it, uh, it triggers the feeder. Now, uh, you could put the feeder, like let's say, at the bottom of the stairs and the wobbler up at the top. And the, so now the dog is running stairs, up and down the stairs to get its meal. And so that's the way your dog can earn its, uh, and get some enrichment out of it. Um, we were, Amanda and I were even interviewing someone uh, a while back and they were, we saw that we were on video chat. We saw in the background, the dog was running back and forth across some Cavalettis. Uh, any of you in uh, Agility World, uh, you know, the, uh, or uh, Cavalettis help um, with, you know, placement of feet. It's like a ladder on the ground. They have to run across that. Uh, well, she put the wobbler at one end of the Cavaletti and the feeder at the other. And so the dog was running the Cavalettis on its own while she was working on the computer. Mm -hmm. And with the ball game, I have one of those little plastic swimming pools and I fill that up with balls, uh, the little colorful balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have in, in the store, we have, um, it's called the ultimate game pack. And with that package, you've got the pet tutor feeder, uh, the floor base, the original floor base. You get the, uh, the Kong wobbler. It's just a standard Kong wobbler. So, uh, you know, nothing special about that. You open it up. Normally you'd put treats in there, but instead of treats, you put the smart clicker, uh, and uh, again, put it in a koozie or wrap some paper towel around it and stick it inside. And then when it gets moved, uh, the dog doesn't come with this package, by the way, he stays. But you get the Kong Wobbler there. Uh, that's included in the, pa uh, you get your choice, uh, Wobbler or a IQ ball. And again, both of those are, are standard products you can, uh, you can get from uh, Amazon or Chewy's, places like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, either size wobbler will work if you've already got one of those. So, you know, if you didn't want, it's a pretty good deal on the, uh, uh, the Ultimate Game Pack uh, because it, it has everything, but you could just get the Pet Tutor. Uh, if you've got your wobbler, the Pet Tutor and a clicker, and that would be uh, really all you would need to kind of start your own game. So you've got lots of different ways to go with that. Um, we do separately sell also, I mentioned that Pet Tutor is a uh, open interface. Uh, that means that others can develop products. So on the gaming side of things, and Nick's going to set up for a game oh, here. I didn't know you were doing that one. I thought you were just doing the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now here sh the <clears throat> we're showing now the, uh, now this boy likes balls. So that drop. Very good boy. Very good boy. Oh, wait a minute, where did that treat go? So now we're going down into the ball. So this is a game. Now this is one you gotta watch with this boy. And we're gonna have to keep the rate of reinforcement pretty high because he loves balls. And, but we've got him focused on the food. Now, this boy's pretty good about getting into new stuff. I wouldn't necessarily just start any dog out like this. I might even, you know, first get them used to the pet tutor, uh, then maybe just a baby pool. Or as we showed earlier, got the ball. he's got the ball. Come here, baby. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, he, he's, uh, he's a he's, retriever. He's the bigger balls, like the bouncy balls yeah, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously you'd want, you'd want to be really careful. Uh, yeah. You know, with this boy, it's a highly supervised game, uh, but as long as he's getting the treats, that's going to keep him focused. Yeah, so we'll put that, put the game away. We had a, a question about the IQ ball. Is the IQ ball hard plastic or soft rubber? Uh, it is uh, hard plastic. Uh, so it would be, yeah, the question was about um, hardwood floors. So you would pro it's not terribly loud, but it would make noise as it rolls across a hardwood floor. Uh, you know, uh, along that line, there is one that's a little softer. I've not had a lot of experience. I saw uh, at one of the trade shows, Kong brought out another ball that that had like a soft uh, rubber. They call it orbit. Uh, uh, 
Oh um, gosh, what do they call that? Yeah, there's another name for that. Um, oh, and yeah, so this is one that I've, I've played a lot with my dog. So I set it up. Uh, now, Nick is just pressing the button, but uh, if we had, you know, we could set the Kong Wobbler out again and let uh, Holden actually hit the Wobbler and then he has to go back to the snuffle mat. The snuffle mat is something that really helps a dog develop that uh, uh, olfactory work. And so he's uh, searching around inside this mat to find the treat that came out. So that's another game. Uh, uh, oh, someone asked, is the treat ejected with the same amount of force each time? No, there's a lot of factors that go into how far that might, roughly it's going to be in the same spot. It depends on how high you have uh, yeah, it. Right. Uh, if you have it higher up, it's going to have a bigger circle of targets. It's kind of like if you think about a, a bullseye and, and you've got shots all around the bullseye, it'll get bigger the further you are away. Um, and the size of each no, two treats are not identical. Uh, so that's going to have variation in it. So it won't come out exactly the same place. Now it's going to have variation. That's just one of, of a whole variety of snuffle mats that are on the market. Again, we don't sell the snuffle mat. You can buy those separately. I have a question. Yep. So if, uh, as in, if say the treats, uh, you wanted to use something to reset the dog, so, for instance, if you were calling the dog to uh, to across the room and you wanted to then reset the dog, would you use a pet tutor in any way to do that? You know, to send the dog away so then you could call him back again. And so, because you don't have that two people to yeah to call him back and forth. Nick, I think you're pretty much doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, why don't you, uh, do you have your bait bag? Yeah, so yeah, so this is where an example of a pet tutor uh, as an assistant, and so you could, now I don't think this guy has a go out, so there is a, in training a, a, the go out command, uh, but we could use uh, a set of treats, yeah, that's his regular kibble. <clears throat> and so you could call him to you. Can we back up, yeah. Okay, so he's going to go there now. Nick can call him. So he just uh, gave Holden the come. Oh, and he's set. Yeah. Good boy. Okay, and so Nick just pressed the button uh, and the feeder beeps. So Holden went back to the feeder now. Nick, yeah, he might be thirsty. Yeah. Okay, I think our star might need a drink. Yes. <laughs> You know how stars are. They're so temperamental, Amanda. It just, I kind uh, of expect him, though, yeah. his personality is going to get in the bowl. <laughs> I think we're going to have to have a talk with his agent. This was not, yeah, this is not in the contract. Okay, so uh, Holden is uh, just starting to learn. Now he's going to, he heard the beep, so he's already been conditioned to that. So that'll get him automatically to go over to the feeder. And now, yep, and so now Nick can call Holden to him. Uh, and so now we're getting a, a chance to practice recalls using the pet tutor. And so he's just using the, the smart clicker remote to trigger the feeder when Holden comes to him. He's giving him a treat out of the treat bag. So just hand delivered treat on this end and then uh, a treat delivered from the pet tutor on the other end. And this is a trick, I, I don't know, well, trick's not really the right word, but I think it's some flexibility. <laughs> now hold on. Oh, he has some history that. there with that. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Chin oh. rest. <laughs> Holden's been sleeping all morning. He's ready to play. Yeah, so you can mix up. Uh, that's the beauty of, of thinking about this as a tool is you can mix it up. Sometimes you use the pet tutor, sometimes you hand deliver the treat, um, and so you can deliver it both ways. Uh, 
and I've seen that used to, to great effect uh, in some agility applications. And we got uh, Susan Garrett coming up here in just a few minutes. Um, she'll talk a lot more about dog sport in general and, and agility. There is a yeah, uh, yeah. There. Are, uh, just to, to recap, the different ways you can trigger the feeder. So there is a manual feed button. Uh, that's really more for testing on the side of the feeder. The manual feed on the uh, feed button, just to kind of get it started to make sure every you got the food in it and the batteries are good. That manual feed button. That's number one. Number two would be with the yeah, and that just dispenses out. Really, mostly for testing. <laughs> Uh, because you have to be right there to push the button. Uh, but then you can use the smart clicker, uh, pressing the, the manual feed button. It's like a remote. Uh, and then you can also use the phone app that Amanda went through earlier. Uh, you don't need the base and unless you're doing something on floors like this. We showed the hook and ways to hang it. Uh, the food comes out the bottom of the feeder. So uh, if you're in an area like this, uh, you really need to hang it uh, if you don't have the floor base. You have to have something to hang it on. Now with the hook, you have lots of other options. You can hang it on a table or another crate, but uh, the food will come out the bottom so you can't just set it on the floor. That, will, that, that wouldn't work. Uh, someone said, if both sides of the feeder are the same. Uh, yeah, could you show the bottom of the feeder again? I think just to help them orient on the uh, where the logo is. So you see the logo on this side, and that's where the hole is. If you look in the bottom, could you show the bottom, Nick? Yeah, see, that's where the food comes out. And if you show them the back side where the label is, the thing that's different is there's the URL. So you don't have that. That tells you it's the back side. If you look through the blue tube, you can see a different color too. You, the brushes are there. If you rotate it around back, you can kind of see the backside once you get used to it a little bit. Yeah, there's the front and there's the food it comes out that side. Uh, so if you're mounting it in there, there's the backside. Yeah, the website is listed on the back. And now Nick's going to show uh, the last mounting option, which is the new travel base. Not, yeah, there we go. Uh, and now this one uh, is designed to be more compact and light and travel. Now that doesn't have the bone with it. Uh, do we have a bone out? We do, we did. Um, right one? Yeah, that's right. I thought we held it up earlier. It was right here, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let us uh, see if we can, oh, you find it? Okay, good. Yeah, so this is the travel. Actually, there's two parts, that uh, bone, if you could put that together. Uh, hey, buddy, come here. Come here. Yeah, good boy. So what you see right now is the travel bowl set or travel bowl kit. It's three, three parts to this, uh, the bowl, uh, removable bowl, the bone, and that is the stabilizing bone on the back, and then the universal mount or universal base, the same one that we uh, used for the crate mount. And now you put the three parts together and you can set it on the floor and deliver it into that bowl. Uh, that's a smaller bowl, a little lighter weight, and that's the front you see there, so that'll drop into the bowl. And if you take that apart, then you can put that in our, um, a uh, travel bag. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. And so we're going to show you the travel bag now, which uh, any of these new mounts, we just came out with these this year, the, the new crate mount, the new um, travel bowl set, and the new climb adapter. And if you have especially the shorty, uh, all of those will go into, uh, into the travel bag. So you can see it's got zipper pockets on the front and back. You open it up from the top. And uh, what I really like about this, yeah, there's the, the feeder. And uh, that's the inside. This is, uh, it's a cooler too. So that is uh, insulation and padding. So you really get two, two advantages there. It protects the feeder from 
getting banged around on things, but it can also keep, if you've got stuff like hot dogs or string cheese, it'll keep those cool. Uh, so the, the travel bag, and then you can put the, uh, the other travel attachments either in the feeder itself or uh, zip them on top. Now this is the full, uh, full size uh, feeder tube. And you can buy those, uh, you can buy the mounts separately. So if you already have a feeder, you can buy that. Uh, if you wanted the travel bag, that's sold separately. Uh, but we also have uh, packages that we offer uh, with those together. So there's the shorty and the travel set goes in. Yeah, you can put it in the side. So there's a zipper pocket on the side. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're talented, I'll tell you. Yeah. Or, you know, that'll go on top. Actually, the, the universal mount, if you put that in first, Nick, put that, put that, yeah, put that in first upside down. There you go. Yeah, so if you put that in, then, then you put the bowl on top of that and the bowl beside it. Yeah, there you go. So that's all three parts right on and top. And your smart of clicker could go in that clever pocket. <laughs> yeah, in that pocket, you could also put the, uh, the smart clicker into. Mm -hmm. Or treats. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, yeah, we had a question about the phone app and the smart clicker. Uh, yeah, the um, the feeder can uh, uh, listen to the phone app or the uh, the smart clicker at, at in the same training session. So you could actually use the smart clicker and the phone together if you had two people training uh, and they wanted to have two devices. Uh, someone is asking, usually if you're, uh, someone said they had some trouble with the clicker, that's usually a dead battery. So if you uh, open the back up on the site, you can find out how to replace the battery. Uh, yeah, the pet tutor uh, does a bond or pair with the phone app. Uh, there is a unique feature though in the way we've set up this Bluetooth that is uh, not technically in the Bluetooth world a pairing. Any feeder can talk to any clicker from the factory. Uh, so you could uh, uh, theoretically walk into a room with 500 pet tutor feeders with one smart clicker and have all of them dispense at once, uh, which would be an awesome power feeling, wouldn't it? Unless, wouldn't it? unless it was your pet tutor that you didn't want to. Yeah, pet right. Pet. Now, if In you don't, case, yeah, right. So if you wanted to make it more unique, then uh, you could associate a pet tutor to a specific, uh, a specific feeder, and uh, there's a process for doing that as well. So you can have it either way. Uh, like kennel operations like to be able to trigger uh, multiple feeders uh, for various reasons or dedicate a feeder to a specific clicker. Um, the app gives you the ability to uh, individually control several feeders at once. So there are lots of ways to do it, and again, the a feeder can talk can receive feed commands from a phone app and a clicker at the same time not two phone apps so if you've got mm -hmm. like a training center and different people want to control a feeder you have to disconnect uh one phone before another one can be connected and that is the nature of bluetooth that's not a pet tutor thing it's just um the the nature of bluetooth and so I think um, with that, we are at our next break and uh, we will get ready for our next uh, presenter, uh, Susan Garrett. I'm really excited to, to have Susan here and she's going to talk about uh, uh, what um, different applications in the, uh, in the dog sport world. So, uh, Nick, thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Great, great. <laughs> you yep. see, they'd still be trying to get one of us up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you saved us yeah. about two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's nice to have young people on the I team. Know, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, so uh, we're going to take a, a, a well, a little less than a 10 minute break. We're going to start uh, on the hour here at uh, three o'clock with uh, Susan Garrett.